They had a tradition that at that time, the world had been previously destroyed. And they dreaded lest a similar catastrophe would, at the end of a cycle, annihilate the human race. It's features like this that are just unequivocal in terms of realizing that this really happened. Human sacrifices were offered while the entire population passed the night upon their knees awaiting their doom. These people imagined the world would end. The Younger Dryas period, named after the Dryas octopetala flower which thrived in cold conditions and became common in Europe during this time, presents a fascinating chapter in Earth's history. This period, spanning approximately from 12,800 to 11,500 years ago, marks a transition from the late Pleistocene to the early Holocene. It's characterized by a dramatic downturn in temperature, disrupting the gradual warming trend following the last glacial maximum the coldest phase of the last ice age. This abrupt shift led to a drop in temperatures estimated to be between 2 to 6 degrees Celsius in a relatively short time. When the world went cold again during the Younger Dryas, the water, the meltwater flowing from the glaciers into the oceans declined if it didn't stop altogether. And then about 1,300 years later, boom, it started up again and that gave us meltwater pulse 1b. The effects of the Younger Dryas were not just confined to the North Atlantic region, but were felt globally, with evidence of climatic changes found in Asia, South America, and even the Southern Hemisphere. The resulting cold and dry conditions had a significant impact on vegetation patterns, ecosystems, and human populations dependent on hunting and foraging. Adding to the intrigue of this period is the proposed comet impact hypothesis. This theory posits that a comet, or fragments of one, struck Earth or exploded in the atmosphere, potentially in multiple waves. The impact, likened to the energy release of several nuclear explosions, is thought to have triggered widespread wildfires, consuming vast areas of forests and grasslands. These fires likely contributed to the formation of the black matte layer, a carbon-rich deposit found at numerous younger, drier sites. Supporters of this hypothesis point to evidence such as microspherals and nanodiamonds, typically formed under high-impact conditions, and elevated levels of rare elements like iridium and platinum to bolster their claims. The reason it's black is because it's so loaded with soot, which suggests wildfires, perhaps on a global or at least a hemispheric scale, that preceded the tremendous flooding that followed in its wake. Charcoal and soot layers in geological records also align with this time frame, suggesting extensive burning. However, the hypothesis is not without its challenges and controversies. One major point of contention is the absence of a clear impact crater, typically expected from such an event. Proponents argue that the comet might have disintegrated in the atmosphere or struck an ice sheet, leaving no obvious crater. Additionally, critics propose alternative explanations for the climatic shift, such as changes in ocean circulation patterns or volcanic activity. The debate continues as the evidence for a comet impact, while compelling, is not universally accepted. The Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, which suggests a comet impact around 12,800 years ago, is a topic that really captures the imagination with its blend of geological mysteries and climatic upheaval. At the heart of this hypothesis is an array of geological evidence. For instance, nano-diamonds, these tiny diamonds formed under extreme pressure, have been found across North America, Europe and parts of Asia in sediment layers dating back to the Younger Dryas period. Their presence in such widespread locations hints at a high-energy event on a global scale. Similarly intriguing are microspherules, small spherical particles often linked to extraterrestrial impacts or volcanic eruptions. The high concentrations of these particles found in the younger Dryas boundary layers further point to a large impact event, but there's more. We see other materials like elevated levels of iridium, rare on Earth but common in meteorites, and magnetic grains containing iridium. Plus, the discovery of soot and carbon-rich layers in these same sediments suggests widespread burning, likely due to wildfires ignited by the impact. Now, these shock-synthesized hexagonal diamonds only occur. They, there's no natural, known natural process that will produce them 
except for the intense heat and pressures of a cosmic impact. Evidence of impact material and the extinction of the megafauna 12,900 years ago. The impact material contains iron oxide spherules in a glassy iron silica matrix, which is one indicator of a possible meteorite impact. Then there are the Carolina Bays, these elliptical depressions along the U.S. Atlantic seaboard. Their origin is hotly debated, but some researchers think they might be craters from secondary impacts of comet fragments, aligning in a pattern that could suggest a comet coming from the northwest. The climatic impact of this proposed event is just as dramatic. Imagine a comet impact throwing massive amounts of dust, soot and particulate matter into the atmosphere. This debris spreading globally would have blocked sunlight, leading to a sudden drop in temperatures. This is exactly what we see when we look at climate models and ice core data from Greenland and Antarctica, which show a sharp temperature decline coinciding with the time of the proposed impact. The cooling effect was particularly strong in the Northern Hemisphere, with temperature drops estimated between 3 to 11 degrees Celsius in some regions. And if that wasn't enough, the comet impact could have also disrupted major ocean currents, like the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, leading to even further cooling, especially in the North Atlantic. During the transition from the Pleistocene Epoch to the Holocene, which roughly overlaps with the Younger Dryas period, something dramatic happened in North America, the extinction of numerous large mammal species. This included some iconic megafauna like woolly mammoths, mastodons, saber-toothed cats, giant ground sloths, and even the North American camel and horse. These extinctions weren't evenly spread across regions, with North America being particularly hard hit. Now, the intriguing part is the timing of these extinctions, which coincides with the Younger Dryas period. This has led proponents of the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis to suggest a connection between the comet impact and these mass extinctions. They argue that the comet impact would have triggered a cascade of ecological disruptions, including wildfires, climate change, and disruptions in the food chain. These sudden environmental changes might have outpaced the ability of these large species to adapt, ultimately leading to their demise. However, it's important to note that there are opposing views some scientists argue for alternative explanations, such as the overkill hypothesis, which suggests that human overhunting played a significant role in these extinctions. Others propose natural climatic changes independent of any impact event as potential drivers. Now, in these events that terminated the Ice Age, roughly half the great megafaunal species on Earth died out very rapidly. All of a sudden, around 12,000 to 13,000 years ago, a huge number of fossil remains were introduced into the environment. And so what, and then at the end of this, these species extinct, are extinct. They don't exist anymore. Like it says here, each square represents a fossil specimen of an extinct megafaunal species. So the debate continues and the impact hypothesis is just one of several competing theories. The Younger Dryas impact hypothesis doesn't stop at biological consequences. It also has implications for early human populations, particularly the Clovis culture. This culture, known for its distinctive stone tools, was widespread across North America during the same time frame as the Younger Dryas. Researchers have noticed a connection between the apparent disappearance or transformation of the Clovis culture and the onset of the Younger Dryas. This suggests that the proposed impact event might have significantly disrupted the way of life for these ancient people. The rapid shift to colder, drier conditions during the Younger Dryas would have undoubtedly affected the availability of food and resources for these hunter-gatherer populations. The changes in megafauna populations, which were a crucial resource for Clovis people, would have compounded these challenges. Archaeological evidence supports this idea of adaptation. There's a noticeable change in human tool technology and subsistence patterns after the Younger Dryas, reflecting a response to new environmental conditions and available resources. This period also marks the emergence of more regionally diverse cultures compared to the previously widespread Clovis technology. Carlson draws attention to rapid temperature changes in Earth's history, particularly emphasizing events like the Younger Dryas, a period marked by a sudden return to near-glacial conditions after a period of warming. 
His perspective challenges the conventional view of gradual climate shifts and instead suggests a dynamic and potentially unstable climate system. He points to historical precedents, such as the bolling alarod warming period before the Younger Dryas, where rapid shifts in climate are evident in paleoclimatic records. These events have been studied to understand the sensitivity and resilience of the Earth's climate system. One of Carlson's intriguing hypotheses is the idea that comet and asteroid impacts may have played a more significant role in Earth's history than currently recognized. He speculates that these impacts could have triggered ice ages or abrupt climatic shifts, potentially even contributing to mass extinctions. In the context of the Younger Dryas, Carlson and other proponents of the impact hypothesis argue that a cosmic impact event was a primary trigger for the abrupt climate change observed during this period. They point to geological and ice core evidence to support their claims. Ice core records, particularly from Greenland and Antarctica, offer detailed insights into past climates. Carlson highlights layers in these cores that correspond to rapid changes in temperature and atmospheric composition, which he interprets as evidence for catastrophic events. Other geological markers, like sediment layers rich in iridium or elements linked to extraterrestrial materials, further support the impact hypothesis. The presence of shock synthesized hexagonal and other nanometer sized diamonds in younger driest boundary sediments in association with soot and other wildfire indicators is consistent with a cosmic impact event of 12.9 kK. Randall Carlson's theory proposes the existence of advanced human civilizations that thrived long before the commonly accepted timeline of known history, potentially even preceding the last ice age, which ended roughly 11,700 years ago. This challenges the conventional view that attributes the emergence of civilization to much later periods, such as the Sumerian and ancient Egyptian civilizations that arose around 6,000 years ago. According to Carlson, these prehistoric societies weren't just technologically advanced, they also possessed profound spiritual understanding and wisdom. He speculates that their technological capabilities could have included advanced architecture, astronomy, and other sciences far surpassing what is typically associated with prehistoric cultures. To support his theory, Carlson points to the complexity and sophistication of ancient structures like the pyramids of Egypt, Stonehenge and various megalithic sites worldwide. He argues that the precision in construction, astronomical alignments and engineering skills evident in these structures suggest a higher level of knowledge and technological capability than mainstream archaeology typically acknowledges. Many of these ancient structures exhibit precise alignments with astronomical phenomena, such as solstices and equinoxes, which Carlson suggests is evidence of advanced astronomical knowledge. For instance, the layout of the Giza pyramid complex is aligned with the stars in the belt of the constellation Orion, while Stonehenge aligns with the solstices. One of Carlson's key ideas is that these advanced ancient civilizations might have met their downfall due to catastrophic events like comet impacts or other natural disasters. These disasters could have wiped out significant populations, leading to the loss of knowledge and technology. He also posits that remnants of this lost knowledge can be found in mythologies, religious texts, and ancient symbols across different cultures. According to Carlson, these ancient stories and symbols may contain allegorical references to real events and the lost advanced knowledge of these prehistoric civilizations. I think it was a civilization that emerged from shamanism, but did not stay at the hunter-gatherer stage. A lot of archaeologists have said to me, but we don't find any plastic bottles from the Ice Age. That means there was no advanced civilization during the Ice Age. Well, hang on, maybe an advanced civilization might have decided never to get involved in plastic in the first place. In the intriguing world of ancient mysteries, Graham Hancock's global pyramid connection theory stands out with its bold and controversial propositions. He suggests an intriguing link between the pyramids and megalithic structures scattered across the globe, from the imposing pyramids of Egypt to the intricate stoneworks of the Mayans and Aztecs in Central and South America, and even extending to the lesser-known pyramids in China's Shaanxi province and the enigmatic Gunung Padang in Indonesia. Hancock sees a common thread he theorizes that either a singular advanced civilization was behind these architectural marvels or that there was a widespread sharing of knowledge that influenced their construction. The cultural significance of these structures is as varied as their geographical locations, 
Each civilization, with its unique beliefs and traditions, revered these structures for different reasons. Yet the ubiquity of pyramids as a form of monumental architecture is a fascinating aspect that Hancock highlights. The construction timelines of these structures are equally diverse, spanning from the early dynastic period of Egypt around 2700 BCE to the classical period of the Mesoamerican civilizations, which lasted until around 900 CE. They cultivated powers of the human mind that uh, we dismiss and regard as uh, completely, completely unimportant. Hancock is particularly interested in the engineering techniques used in these structures. The precision in construction is nothing short of remarkable. The Great Pyramid, for instance, is a testament to this precision, with its perfectly aligned stones and joints, often put together without any mortar. This level of accuracy in the stonework, especially considering the era in which these structures were built, is a feat that continues to baffle many. Furthermore, the massive stone blocks used in these constructions, some weighing several tons, indicate a level of architectural knowledge and capability that seems far ahead of its time. What is truly intriguing is the architectural complexity of these structures. Constructed in an era without the technological advancements of the modern world, these pyramids and megaliths raise questions about the level of knowledge and capabilities of ancient builders. Were they simply extraordinarily skilled? Or was there an external influence, perhaps from a now lost advanced civilization? Now, delving into the idea of an advanced ancient civilization, a concept that veers sharply from the path trodden by mainstream academics. His theory paints a picture of a civilization, existing more than 10,000 years ago, that was leaps and bounds ahead of its time in fields like astronomy, engineering, and mathematics. This civilization, as Hancock proposes, predates the earliest known societies like Sumer and ancient Egypt, which conventional history places at around 6,000 years ago. At the heart of the theory is the awe-inspiring astronomical precision of ancient structures. Take, for instance, the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's not just a monumental tomb, it's a testament to astronomical alignment, with its sides precisely mirroring the cardinal points. Then there's the Pyramid of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza, known as El Castillo, where during the equinoxes, an interplay of light and shadow conjures the image of a serpent descending its steps a marvel of ancient engineering and understanding of celestial events. Perhaps one of the most fascinating aspects of the theory is the Orion Correlation Theory, which he developed alongside Robert Boval. They propose that the layout of the three pyramids of Giza correlates with the three stars of Orion's belt. This isn't just a coincidental alignment. According to Hancock, it's a deliberate mirror of the heavens, indicative of an advanced astronomical understanding the signs of civilization that we see emerging are not the beginnings of civilization. They're a restarting. But where did this knowledge come from? Some point to megalithic sites like Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, dating back to around 10,000 BC. These sites are not just ancient. They are complex and aligned with celestial bodies, suggesting an understanding of astronomy and mathematics far beyond what we would expect from that era. He doesn't stop there. He even brings ancient maps into the equation like the Piri Reis map, which he believes displays a geographical understanding that seems too advanced for its time. Of course, every great civilization has its downfall, and his theory is no exception. He speculates about cataclysmic events, possibly a comet impact around 10,500 BC, leading to the civilization's demise. This catastrophe, he believes, scattered the survivors across the globe, who then imparted their advanced knowledge to the emerging civilizations they encountered. Now what if we combine two different thoughts here? What if the ancient civilization many mention that came from the stars were the ancient Anunnaki? Zechariah Sitchin's theories about the Anunnaki and their connection to Earth have stirred up quite a conversation in both scientific and alternative history circles. According to Sitchin, the Anunnaki weren't just deities of ancient Mesopotamian lore, but extraterrestrials from a distant planet named Nibiru. This planet, he claims, orbits our sun every 3,600 years, coming close enough to Earth to have influenced our history in profound ways. It's a story that seems straight out of a science fiction novel, but Sitchin grounded his ideas in his translations of ancient Sumerian and Mesopotamian cuneiform texts, which he interpreted as historical records rather than mythological tales. Sitchin's narrative delves into the reasons behind the Anunnaki's visits to Earth. 
He proposed that these extraterrestrial beings were in search of resources, particularly gold, which they needed to repair their home planet's atmosphere. But their influence on Earth, according to Sitchin, went far beyond a mere interstellar gold rush. He believed that the Anunnaki utilized their advanced technology and knowledge to help build many of the ancient world's incredible structures, like the Egyptian pyramids and the ziggurats of Mesopotamia. Perhaps one of the most controversial aspects of his theory is the idea that the Anunnaki engaged in genetic engineering. Sitchin speculated that the first humans were a product of the Anunnaki, combining their DNA with that of early hominids on Earth. This, he argued, significantly accelerated human development and influenced the trajectory of our civilizations. The reach and implications of Sitchin's theories are vast. He suggested that the Anunnaki didn't just leave behind architectural wonders, but also imparted knowledge and skills that spurred the growth of ancient societies. It's a theory that paints the story of human civilization in a completely different light, suggesting that our advancements might have had a little extraterrestrial push. And suddenly we see these signs of civilization appearing, and in places like Gobekli Tepe, those signs already include highly sophisticated knowledge. The theory that interlinks the Anunnaki, a group of ancient deities from Mesopotamian mythology, with the construction of Earth's megalithic structures is a narrative rich in speculation and wonder. Advocates of this theory believe the Anunnaki were not mere mythological figures, but advanced extraterrestrial beings. Their alleged arrival on Earth and involvement in monumental constructions have fascinated many who seek explanations beyond conventional history. Proponents suggest that the Anunnaki possessed far superior technological and engineering capabilities compared to the humans of their time. This advanced knowledge, they argue, was instrumental in the construction of various awe-inspiring ancient structures, such as the pyramids of Egypt, the mysterious Stonehenge, the colossal Moai statues of Easter Island, and the towering pyramids of Mesoamerica. The intricate designs, the massive stones used, and the precision of these constructions are often cited as beyond the capabilities of ancient civilizations without external assistance. One striking feature of these ancient structures is their astronomical alignment. For instance, Stonehenge's layout closely aligns with the movements of the sun during solstices and equinoxes. Similarly, many ancient structures across the globe share architectural features despite their geographical distances, hinting, as some believe, at a common source of knowledge or influence. The theory also delves into the timing of the Anunnaki's arrival on Earth. It is often suggested that their arrival coincided with, or followed, significant cataclysmic events, like great floods or environmental disasters. This timing is seen as strategic, either for the purpose of assisting in Earth's restoration, or exploiting its resources in a period of human vulnerability. This aspect of the theory finds resonance in various ancient mythologies, which are replete with tales of gods or celestial beings descending to Earth in times of great need. Some theorists go as far as to interpret these mythological accounts not as allegorical or symbolic stories, but as historical records of actual events, including the arrival and actions of the Anunnaki. In particular, flood myths prevalent in various cultures, such as the biblical story of Noah and the Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh, are sometimes pointed to as supporting evidence for a global cataclysm that coincided with the Anunnaki's arrival. These narratives, they argue, are not just mythical tales, but potentially documentations of real events that were witnessed and recorded by ancient civilizations. While this theory garners interest and has a certain appeal to those fascinated by ancient mysteries and the possibility of extraterrestrial influence, it remains outside the realm of mainstream historical and archaeological discourse. The lack of empirical evidence and the speculative nature of the interpretations involved place this theory in the category of alternative history rather than established fact. Nonetheless, it continues to be a topic of intrigue and discussion among enthusiasts of ancient astronaut theories and alternative historical narratives.